Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is all about wine. I'm going to be sharing with you my current favorite wines. I've done a few dedicated wine favorite videos in the past and I will link that playlist below. So please check that out because I have tried not to. In fact, I don't think I've repeated any of these wines. So if you're looking for some recommendations, this is the place. Welcome. If you are new, I would love to have you subscribe. And if you find this video really helpful, share it with all of your friends. Leave me a comment below of some of your favorite wines. Give this video a thumbs up and let's jump into this. Every month here on my channel, I always share my favorite wine. And so my monthly favorites videos will have recommendations as well. But I'm gonna be starting off today with a wine that I recently shared in my June favorites, but I have to tell you, it has become my absolute favorite Pinot Noir. And I was never even a Pinot Noir girl um, before my friend Sherilyn introduced me to the Mayomi Pinot Noir. I'm referencing my notes as I talk because I really want to get across to you all the things that are in the wine to help you perhaps make a decision on which one kind of is what you're looking to try. I'm going to be inserting a picture of the wines that I do not currently have in my home so that you can get an idea of what the bottle looks like, but I'm going to be giving you full descriptions as well. The Mayomi Pinot Noir is a California wine. It is very rich and vibrant in color. It has wonderful bright flavors of strawberry jammy fruit. It smells like mocha, vanilla, a little toasty oak. The actual body of the wine is so juicy. You have a lot of blackberry flavors going on, boysenberry, dark cherry. Um, there's a good complexity to the wine. Um, there's just enough oak in it that it provides a nice structure in the mouth. There's a little bit of depth to it, and you don't often see that in a Pinot Noir, which is why I'm not usually drawn to a Pinot Noir, because I love a very big, bold Cabernet. I mean, at this point, I'm really open to trying any wine, and I've tried a wide variety of wines. So you're gonna see red wines in this list, white wines, and rosés. This next wine is perfect for this time of year. So if you are looking for a white wine in the summer heat, Look no further than the Sea Pearl Sauvignon. The color on this, it's a very nice pale color with a little bit of green to it, so it's very beautiful. There's some herbal notes, snow pea, melon, fresh guava. Is that how you say that? I always, I always pronounce words incorrectly. It's either guava or guava. Um, this is a very light-bodied, refreshing wine. A good crispness to it, um, but also you're going to get a lot of those... Um, melon type flavors, like summer tropical type flavors with the passion fruit, grapefruit. Um, it's got a very long lasting finish that is just, it's crisp, it's a little bit of sweet, and it's just very comfortable. It's just a great white wine. This next wine I have shared previously, um, but I have to mention it again because it just goes really well with this time of year as well. I like to drink more rosés and whites in the summer, even though I do love my Pinot Noirs. Um, and, and by golly, if you're serving me a big bowl of yummy, delicious pasta, give me a cap any day, or steak on the grill, hamburgers, that kind of thing. Um, but I really like a crisp porch rocking wine in the afternoon. So Los Dos Rosé, you just need to try this. This is really a unique rosé because it's a blend of 85% Grenache grapes and then 15% Cabernet grapes, which I love Cabernet. So that Cabernet just elevates this rosé to me. Like it's such a great blend because you still get the qualities of a rosé, but you get the full bodiedness of the Cabernet. So the color of this is fantastic. This is a Spanish wine. Um, it's from Spain and the color is beautiful. If you're looking for a wine just like rosé solely based on color, this is a really beautiful, rich, pinky rose color in the glass. It is elegant, it's lively, it has raspberry, lychee fruit, white flowers, it's so silky smooth and it has a really nice, longer lasting finish. But as I'm making this list, I'm like, I don't actually have a lot of these on hand. I have three that I'm gonna to get to that I do have on hand that I just picked up. But a lot of these that I'm mentioning, uh, mentioning are standbys. They're staples, they're things I just reach for that I know are gonna work. If I'm having company over, these are things that I will pick up at the store and I know are gonna work, people are gonna love. This is my favorite Zinfandel, the Lestoria Zinfandel. I've talked about this in the past. Um, this is from Sonoma County, California. This is another bright, lively one. This. It's so good. <laughs> it's got dark cherries, blueberries, plum, raisin. There's some oak in this as well, but the oak brings forth some vanilla, 
um, like to the nose, some vanilla, some brown sugar, cinnamon, um, perhaps a slight toast and smokiness quality, which let me tell you, a smoky quality to a wine is, oh, one of my all-time favorite things. There's just something about, I don't even know how to describe it other than it's wonderful. Um, it's a very medium-bodied wine, and it's soft, elegant tannins, which I, a tannin is like, the thing that makes your mouth feel kind of dry. So something that's got a lot of tannins in it is going to be, um, it's going to feel like you have cotton in your mouth kind of thing. I personally don't love that, like a Chianti. Um, I don't mind that if I'm eating something that pairs well with it. Like for instance, something that would be very tannin-like or some, very dry in the mouth would be a Chianti, but that goes perfect if you're having lasagna because the, the, it needs to be a very bold, strong wine to stand up to something that's got tomato sauce, cheese, meat, that kind of thing. That's a bold dish. And so it actually pairs well and it kind of softens the tans. You don't notice it as much. It's, it's an amazing thing when you pair the right wine with the right food, truly. It's even better than just drinking it by itself, but that's a whole separate video. Anyways, this is a really nice, juicy finish on this Zinfandel. And I can assure you that every single wine that I'm mentioning here um, is delicious on its own. Like if you're just going to pour yourself a glass, watch some YouTube, which is what I usually do, or watch a television show and eat it or drink it. Um, usually I'm eating while well drinking, so I guess that's why I said that. Um, but most of these are things you can just sit down and drink. Okay, we're back to Mayomi because they also make a delicious and wonderful Chardonnay. So it's very creamy. This is going to have some oakiness to it. So if you don't like a creamy, oaky, actually, I don't remember it being incredibly creamy and oaky, though. It's just a really nice, balanced, creamy oakiness. Um, I don't mind an unoaked Chardonnay, but I like, I like an oaked Chardonnay. I just think oak just adds a really nice, woody quality. The Chardonnay is going to have layers of pineapple, lemon peel. Um, the smells on it on the nose are going to be honey, almonds, baking spices, maybe some subtle custard notes. Um, this is going to have a lot of flavor, um, but it's going to be a very clean mineral-like finish, so it's not going to be too too sweet or too over-the-top creamy. It's just very clean at the end of it, but man, it smells so good. This next wine, if you are a fan of tart, like a really tart, crisp white wine, then you need to get yourself the Santa Martino or Santa Martina Pinot Grigio. Now this is from Toscana, Italy. This is an Italian white wine. Think tart green Granny Smith apples. Um, so this wine comes from the hillside vineyard that had it's very rich in minerals and volcanic rock. So what that does to the wine or to the grape, I should say, is that it creates a very dry, crisp, vibrant texture to it, which is what gives it that very tartness. Um, white fruits, flowers, um, maybe a hint of almond. This isn't going to be a sweet wine. This is going to be something that is just crisp. Maybe it's really hot out. And you just want a porch rock and wine that just is going to take off the edge of your, your irritability at how hot it is outside. At least that's how I feel sometimes. Go for this. This is just really wonderful. Next, I want to talk about the Vanderpump Rosé. And it took me a little bit to try this because the price point on this is higher than I usually spend. I mean, it's around $20 or so. Um, I usually won't spend more than $20 on a bottle of wine. So this is kind of up there. I mean, the Listoria one, I, I think, is up towards the $20 mark too, but I usually buy them when they're on sale. In a lot of places, if you buy six or more, they'll give you a percentage discount. So this is from France. Provence, France is where this wine is made. This is a very elegant wine, and I'm not surprised because Lisa Vanderpump, she, she's just always dressed to the nines, and I mean, she lives in, what, Beverly Hills, California. I guess that's a very elegant area, um, but it's also delicate at the same time. There's hints of pepper, some sweet citrus, strawberry, tangerine, peach, and it's a very um, classically dry rosé. Now, don't let that scare you off because I don't like a really, really dry wine unless I'm eating it with something or drinking it with something as I previously um, mentioned. But this, this is so doable. It's a very great classic style rosé and I think you should try it. Finally, we have a wine I can hold up. I, you know, I thought about purposely going, I thought about going out 
and buying all these wines to show you, but I'm like, you know what? Let's just, I mean, you've seen these wines. You've heard me talk about them before, but I thought a picture from the internet would do just as well. So this is a new wine. Well, I tried this one before. They have different um, varieties, but this one I hadn't tried. So this is Rare Black Blend. It's a 2015 California dark red wine. Let's see if it says where it is from. Lodi is the region that this is from. So this is very, very delicious, in fact. It is a complex structure, which typically when I read the word complex on any wine description, I wanna try it because that's where you're gonna get a variety of uh, things going on in your mouth. When It's not just gonna be a one level wine or it's not just gonna be like berries, it's not just gonna be um, kind of bitter and dry. It's got a complex, a complexity to it, which is my favorite. So there's elegant layers of red and black stone fruit. There's some oak barrel spice and moderate tannins. It's a big, full body, juicy wine. I wouldn't say it's it's huge. It's not like like a really big Cabernet, but it's a, it's a good it's a good red wine. It's great by itself. What did I I had the other day with this? I think I had it with like burgers or something. Um, but I had it actually last night in the bathtub <laughs> by itself. But it's really delicious. Okay, so this is a new wine to me. I actually just had a sample of it at HEB because every weekend, well, most days of the week and even on the weekends for sure, HEB will do samples. They'll open up wines and let you sample them, and I think that is a fantastic way to try a new wine. But they um, had the Blazon California Pinot Noir. It's a 2016. So this, when I tried it, was like, okay, this is reminding me of the Mayomi Pinot Noir, but I think this comes off a little bit sweeter. So this is what the bottle looks like. Um, this is also from Lodi, California. S substantial flavors and aromas, delicate palate, perfectly balanced, medium bodied flavors of black cherry, currant, hint of spiciness, and a smooth, rich, velvety feel to the mouth. Now, I actually think it comes off a little bit more jammy than the description would lend it to be. But I think I think it's worth trying. I think you would like it if you like juicy, juicy fruits and something that's just not as heavy as say some of the previously mentioned red wines, then give that Pinot Noir a try as well. Another new wine to me is this one here by Blue Nun. So this is a Riesling. And this, where is this from? This is from Germany. Now, this is a 2017 winemaker's passion. This is very, I think this is sweet. Well, I wouldn't drink anything sweeter than this, put it that way. Um, it's a really nice sweet though. It's not overkill. So it's fragrant, smells very delicious, fruity, crisp, lively, and refreshing. Um, I wouldn't say it's too crisp though. I think it's just a really nicely balanced Riesling. If you are somebody that only likes sweet wines, please try this. I think you will be very pleasantly surprised. Um, I said 2017, but on the label here, it says 2018. I got this description off of the online website. But this is such a great Riesling, great for this time of year. Now, you want to talk about like a porch rocking, sitting outside, easy drinking situation. A Riesling or a Moscato is going to be one of those things for you. And the very last wine is also new to me. I had a sample of this as well, and you know, samples just really suck you in, but at the same time, if you're gonna spend the money on a new bottle of wine you've never tried before, and you're solely going off of a description, if the store even has one, or if you're going off of somebody else's recommendation, you're kind of taking a risk, right? You might like it, you might not. Um, but ha being able to sample something is wonderful. But this is the Martin Ray Vineyards and Winery, this is Rosé of Pinot Noir from Sonoma County. It is a vintage, vintage 2018 Rosé. I would say that Los Dos wine that I had already shared with you, the um, Cabernet Grenache blend, it's kind of like this color. So ro Rosés vary in their color. The uh, Vanderpump one I already mentioned is a lighter color as well than this bottle. So this is juicy. This is strawberries bright Bing cherries, a little hint of English rose, which adds that elegant floral quality to the wine. Um, it also has Bosch pear, ripe cantaloupe, watermelon rind, and honeysuckle. Seriously, you guys, this wine is the epitome of a beautiful summer rosé. So I would say go out and get this one as well. I mean, go out and try them all eventually. They're all wonderful. Um, I can assure you that uh, 
what I really like in a wine is I like a complexity. I like a very drinkable, soft tannin. I like something velvety and silky. I don't tend to like things that are overly dry. I don't really like extremes, I guess you could say. I like just comfortable things, whether we're talking about wine or clothing or food or life. Like, who doesn't like to be comfortable? But I'm just saying, I think that my wine choices and, and my recommendations are going to appeal to a wide variety of people's tastes. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I have such a passion for wine. It's like this undiscovered passion I didn't even know existed until I became um, an adult <laughs> and until I really started delving into learning about wines, watching wine documentaries, learning about the really painstaking slow process and tedious process it is to make a bottle of wine and I just think it's really fascinating so I hope you enjoyed today's video don't forget to subscribe leave me a comment below of some of your absolute favorite must-haves things we must all try I think we'll all benefit from sharing what our favorite things are in the comments below we will chat again very soon. And I also have that playlist too. So if you're like, this isn't enough, I want more, you're looking for something specific, um, I have a lot more recommendations in those videos as well. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and we'll chat again soon. Bye.